That was a crazy week. We had record volumes on the New York Stock Exchange that we haven't seen since the financial crisis of 2008-2009. We had short squeezes on GME. Stock ran up 400%. AMC up 300%. Lots of market volatility. It's Saturday morning, January 30th. Hello, traders. If you've come here this morning looking for new trade ideas, that's what you should be accustomed to getting out of these videos. But today... I have something much more important to cover. This is great education. You know, when I watch YouTube videos, I never see anybody talk about how to adjust positions, how to reduce risk, what to do when your positions are in a problem. Apparently, everybody's just making 200, 300, 500% winners, and they don't ever have any losers. So I must be the only one. This is going to be a really good educational video, so that I hope that you stay tuned and I hope that you learn from our experiences this week. Let's do some market analysis because as you know from every single video that I do, everything starts with the market. So first of all, we want to put up our major moving averages to see where they come into play. 200 day, 100 day, 50 day, all seemingly out of range. Although you can see the 50 day did come into play on Friday. Now I want to draw some trend lines here. I'm going to start here because this is the first trend line that I really went by, not this data point right here. When you're drawing trend lines, it's important that you connect as many touch points as possible. That's what validates the trend line. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I know I get a lot of questions. Well, how do you know? How do you draw it? If I draw it here, I get this. If I draw it there, I get that. I just try and connect as many dots as I can. This is an upward sloping channel that I've been referring to for the last couple of months. It started back in November. And I am actually going to tell you where I think the market could go next week or in the next couple of weeks. So you can see how everything's great. Touch, touch, touch. That's a bad data point. Touch, touch, touch. Everything looks good. And then we poke out through the upper end of the channel. Now I've been warning back in here, I said, listen, when this happens, this is usually a sign that we're getting close to a buying climax. I thought that with the prospects of a $1.9 trillion stimulus bill and with mega cap tech earnings coming up, that we could even see a bigger buying climax. It didn't happen. That tells me that there is stiffer resistance. Now, once the market started to falter, it was apparent to me that we were in trouble. This isn't something I just cooked up in the last few days. I've been telling you for weeks, bullish sentiment is off the charts. Well, that was really demonstrated this week by short squeezes that we haven't seen anything like this since the dot-com bubble in the year 2000. GME, AMC, I could go through probably two dozen stocks that were running higher because there were short squeezes put on. Social media was promoting these stocks and the short squeeze was on. We had all sorts of indications like that as far as bullish sentiment. Margin lending at all-time record highs on a dollar basis. Market riding the upper edge of a Bollinger Band. Market poking through the upper band of an upward sloping channel. VIX at a very, very low level, meaning that there's no fear in the marketplace. Valuations stretched as high as you can imagine at a PE of 40. These are all major warning signs. And so for two weeks, I've been urging you, if you are a swing trader who can't watch the market during the day, please go to the sidelines. Reduce risk, reduce risk, reduce risk. I hope you heeded my warning. Now, that rhetoric of mine really got ramped up on Monday. And you can see this long tail under body right here. Market opened close to the all-time high on Monday. And then whoosh, the bottom fell out. In 30 minutes, the S&P 500 fell 60 points. In a raging bull market with a very, very strong bid that is going to go higher, that doesn't happen because buyers are there constantly bidding, 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 and you don't get those air pockets like that. Now, we were in a bull market, upward sloping channel, big earnings coming up. So yes, 
market did rally back, rally back, and it closed near its high of the day. Then we had a new high on Tuesday, but the market closed off of that new high. Okay, not too much of a problem until overnight Wednesday. Coming into Wednesday morning, we get this big gap down. Uh-oh, that selling pressure that we saw on Monday was right back again. We had all sorts of market volatility. Well, of course, over the course of the last three weeks, I've been telling you to go to the sidelines, go to the sidelines, go to the sidelines. What am I doing? I had been putting on bullish put spreads, but I had been scaling them back. We had initiated them. We had three spreads expired a week ago. Great. We greatly reduced our risk. We had eight bullish put spreads on. Heading into the week, we only had five bullish put spreads on. And I've got to tell you, Monday when I saw this market drop, I went, "Uh uh-oh, that's not a good sign. But we were able to rebound. The next day, we're challenging the high again. Wednesday, I knew we were in trouble, especially when the market sold off the whole day and tested the lower end of this upward sloping channel. Wednesday nights, I do my videos for my members, and you've probably seen it on YouTube because I released it yesterday, Friday, January 29th, and I went through all of our positions. Obviously, we were not looking to add new bullish positions. We had positions that were in trouble, and I tried to get too cute. I tried to squeeze out the last few trades. My intent has been to get to cash. If everything had gone as expected, these Bullish put spreads were way out of the money at the start of the week. Everything was looking good. We would have had three spreads expire worthless yesterday, and we would only have two bullish put spreads on. We would be 80% cash. No problem, because I expected that the market bid would remain strong through all mega cap tech earnings. And next week, we still have Google and Amazon. Both companies should report good earnings. But what happened during the course of the week? Well, on Tuesday, we had Microsoft announce after the close. Great number. Stock rallied. That was not a problem for the market. But that good news Tuesday night didn't matter because Wednesday morning, we were still selling off. But that's okay. Wednesday, we had a FOMC statement coming out. I knew it would be super dovish. It was. Market really didn't care. Continued to sell off. But still, we had Facebook and Apple announcing and Tesla announcing after the close Wednesday. Certainly, those tech stocks would attract a bid. No, didn't matter. And in fact, all three stocks traded lower after the number on Thursday. And you can see how the market tried to press above that open from Wednesday. Didn't make it. And we had a bearish hammer here. Not a good sign. But... We had already been planning to take action Wednesday evening. So I'm going to show you what we did, why we did it, the steps we took Friday before the open, and how everything actually played out for us. So very, very important lesson, especially why that particular hedge and why that size was selected. So I'm going to take a look at our problem children, if you will. And here are all the stocks that we had bullish put spreads on. And we'll start off with Walmart. That was the biggest problem child in my eyes because of the price action that I had seen. So here's how the week unfolded. You can see here on January 27th. So this was Wednesday before the video that I recorded. The stock sold off the entire day. So let's try and go back and take a look at the price action on Wednesday so that I can show you why I was so concerned about Walmart in particular. You can see how the stock was steadily trading lower the entire day. I'm going to put up the uh, S&P overlay here so that you can see it. And you can see how the market sells off. The gray line is the market. And the market bounces. That's the S&P bouncing right there. What does the stock do? No. Trending lower. We get a drop in the market. Yes, of course, the stock is going to continue to leak lower. Rally in the market. Stock does not even bounce. This is a sign of very steady selling pressure. That's what got me concerned about Walmart. Well, Thursday, you can see how the stock caught a small bid. But even with the market rally, 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 look right here. 
Look at how high the market pushed right in here and look what the stock did. This is a sign that there are investors unloading shares of Walmart. Could be institutional investors. I do suspect that this might have had something to do with the short squeezes because there are a lot of pairs traders. They'll focus on a particular group or sector and they'll be long a strong stock. These are all the quant traders out there. They trade fundamentals so they may be long Walmart and they may be short GameStop or they may be short another retailer. There were a lot of retail companies that actually are weak stocks but that rallied on short covering this week. So what happens when those trades get in trouble? They have to buy back their short on BBBY and they have to unwind the other side which is being long Walmart so they're selling Walmart shares. I believe that that's one of the reasons that Walmart might have been so weak. They also did have a change at the helm. They've got a new CEO so that also could have created some uncertainty with all the market volatility the uncertainty is going to lead to profit taking and selling so the warning signs were definitely there but the stock was right at our strike price and so you can see the strike price on Thursday excuse me the stock price on Thursday was around hundred and forty four dollars roughly at the close well we were short meaning we had sold the Walmart January 29th the 143 puts so we were short the 143 puts we were long the 142 puts we'd had the trade on for three weeks everything was beautiful no issue with the trade we're kind of getting excited because it looks like we're going to have a winner and the stock at the very last minute starts to fall apart on us so we'll go into that daily chart again and you can see that the 100 day moving average is right here when I am day trading and swing trading I always take a look at the daily chart first to get my bearings well this close below the 100 day moving average was not good now we didn't sell our bullish put spread at the 100 day moving average I like to give myself a little bit more cushion when I can on these bullish put spreads one two three four touch points down here at the 143 level that's why I selected it I also don't like to be ticked out of a trade meaning that the stock tests the 100 day moving average and then we reel the spread back in because we're in panic mode because it's crossed over our short strike being just a little bit below it and expecting that there might be some sell stops that are triggered on a break of the 100 day moving average that keeps us a little bit further out of the money so that's just a tactic that I use when I set up my bullish put spreads but in any event I did not like anything that I saw about Walmart and you can see on Thursday how the stock closed on its low of the day well the market actually closed higher on Thursday than it opened so it was particularly soft relative to the market well now what do I do I'm short the 143 puts I'm long the 142 puts didn't hesitate and I'll show you all my instructions that I sent out before the open Friday morning in this particular case the market had been down 60 S&P points overnight so we had a big drop the night before and the upward sloping trend line on SPY had been challenged at 372 so this is what happened overnight we were actually down to this level but then the market rally rally rallied and it opened all the way up here you can see on the SPY the open is 375.63 so the opening was not down very much at all and when you have these spreads on so mind you we've got three spreads that are pretty close to the money and Wednesday evening big market decline we've got a real problem because we don't have a lot of time left on these trades if I had a week or two and I knew for sure that the market were breaking down then I would be able to leg out of those spreads no problem because when I buy back my short put I still have a lot of time until expiration for the long put to gain steam and if technical support is broken on a stock like Walmart then I know that I can buy back the short and let the long end run so that might have been an alternative for us if my expiration date were February 5th next week then I'd have plenty of time to buy in my Walmart 143 put 
and let the 142 put run and that would be a great strategy and the reason that that makes sense to leg out like that at this juncture is twofold number one now on Friday I know the market is weak because I've seen that it has broken the lower end of that upward sloping channel market first market first market first I know the market is weak okay that checkbox is marked secondly I've got a breach of the 100 day moving average and a breach of horizontal support once these major technical support levels have failed I was leaning on that when I sold my bullish put spread that was my safety net that was my extra cushion that would help me increase my odds of success for this bullish put spread once that support level is breached all of a sudden the picture turns much more bearish now we had originally put these trades on because Walmart has a tendency to rally into the earnings announcement once it gets inside of the two-week window we know that this happens 75 percent or more of the time over the course of the last three years that's great information that's a huge statistical edge to work well that will work normally but not when you have a 180 point decline in the S&P 500 so now we know we've got relative weakness in the stock and we have weakness in the overall market so when I evaluated the stock before the open Friday morning in my instructions that I sent out to members I said we are going to buy back our bullish put spread on Walmart and so here you can see the complete bulletin that was sent I also sent this email out and I also posted this in the chat room so this is a bulletin that's posted in option stalker when you log in you'll see it buy the Walmart January 29 143 puts and sell the 142 puts for a debit of 30 cents we were filled on this trade instantly on the open and we had the orders working before the open the other thing that it's important to point out is that when I post updates to my swing trades for my members I never ever do them during market hours I know that many people are working professionals and that you can't react during market hours so all of the updates either happen the night before or the op before the opening the next day that makes it very difficult for me because I don't know what the market's going to do I don't know what the stock is going to do I'm handcuffed to a large degree and I have to be anticipatory I've really got to put my neck on the line and in this particular case it made complete sense for me to try and buy that spread back in we had initially put it on for a 20 cent credit if we were going to buy it back for 30 cents we would lose 12 and a half percent on that trade it's very comfortable with that I also felt that because the stock was going to be opening just out of the money with only one day left to go that market makers would be pretty happy taking me out of that trade knowing that they're actually going to be selling that spread for 30 cents and that there's a good likelihood that the stock will finish out of the money and that that spread will expire worthless so we were filled on that instantly and that was my rationale behind doing the Walmart trade by buying it back in now another one of our problem children was Lyft and the premise behind that trade was one two three four five touches in here also a stock that likes to rally before earnings earnings were coming up it had a nice upward sloping pattern to the stock and it was in a tight compression could have moved to the upside well we were leaning on that horizontal support and the 50-day moving average and you can see how Wednesday the stock cracked down in this particular instance we were short the $45 puts and we were long the $44 puts so another $1 wide spread and you can see how the stock actually did pretty well on Thursday and it closed near its high of the day and it closed above the 50-day moving average and it was at about $46 Thursday evening I'm feeling pretty good about this because we've only got one day left we're a dollar out of the money 
I did not like what I saw in the futures overnight Thursday heading into Friday morning that the S&P 500 had touched the lower end of the upward sloping trend line. So I was on guard. Another instance where let's err on the side of caution. Let's get to the sidelines. Pete, you've been telling everyone to reduce risk, reduce risk, reduce risk. Here you are with the market conditions that you were suspicious might happen and what you're going to sit back and not reel this thing back in. Of course you had to reel it back in. So on LYFT, the instructions were to buy the Jan 29 45 puts, sell the 44 puts, do that for a debit of 30 cents. On the open, Friday morning, we were able to buy this spread back in for 24 cents, so we lost 4 cents on that trade because we had initially put that on for a 20 cent credit. So we lost 4 cents on it. I believe that comes to a little bit less than 5%. So we lost money on that trade as well. Now we still got one more trade that expired yesterday that we had to address, and that was NET. And you can see we have this nice doji right here, and then the stock lifts off, breaks a downward sloping trend line. That's good. Also has a tendency to rally into earnings, bounces off the 50-day moving average. These are all reasons for us to do the trade. Nice horizontal support right here. So that price point right there should be safe at the 7250 level and on NET we were short the January 29 7250 puts and we were long the $70 puts and we did that for a 50 cent credit now you can see how the stock closed on Thursday very very well and it closed at 78.80. So we are more than five points. We're more than six points out of the money on this bullish put spread with only one day left to go. I also wanted to close this down. I didn't want to monkey around with it. So what we did was we put a bid out there to buy our short put back. I knew we would get filled on this right away. It's kind of a slam dunk. Buy the NET. January 29th, 72.50 puts for five cents. If something crazy happens during the course of the day, try and sell your 70 puts for whatever you can get. I wasn't able to get anything for it. I put a nickel offer out there, but I mainly wanted to buy these puts back to lock in our profits, release margin, reduce risk. So this trade netted us a 22.5% gain. This trade the lift lost 5%. This trade lost 12.5%. So net-net, we were up about 5% in aggregate across all of these trades. So the point being, we made money. We just dodged a bullet. But we didn't leave it at that. We still had two other positions on. And this is where I get into hedging using another vehicle. So I want to emphasize one point to you, and that is that the point of doing bullish put spreads is that you're constantly trying to take advantage of accelerated time premium decay. This is like putting an ice cube on a hot asphalt street in Phoenix. It is continually melting away, but it starts to decay at an accelerated rate in the last week before expiration, and it really gets cooking the last two days before expiration because there's just not a lot of time left in these options. So let's go back to Walmart and I'll show you the perils of trying to leg out of a trade like this is that let's say that Walmart in here, you're short the 143 puts. Let's say that you decide to buy the 143 puts in. And let's say that the market and the stock rally on Thursday. Well, now... You're long the 142 puts, excuse me. You're long the 142 puts and they vaporize. As soon as the stock rallies, you've only got two days left till expiration. Whoosh, they're gone. All the time premium decay comes out of it. You never even had a chance for that trade to work out. You can't take that kind of risk. And the same thing would be true for Lyft or NET. Legging out with only two days left is extremely dangerous because now instead of having accelerated time premium decay working for us 
it's working against us. The other thing is that instead of having a neutral to slightly bullish posture on the underlying stock, we are just absolutely flat out bearish and bearish in a big way. Also, very difficult to flip-flop positions like that when you don't have market confirmation. And we didn't have market confirmation Wednesday evening. What do we know? Is this going to be just a one-off candle right here? Are we going to rally Thursday, close near the opening from Wednesday, and then rally and challenge the high? Certainly possible. The upward sloping channel was still intact, so no problem there. How do you hedge a position like that? What can you do? You can't buy your short puts back because you've got too much exposure on the long puts. You could just try and close the spread down. But what the heck? I've been in this trade for two, maybe even three weeks. We've got time premium decay working in our favor. We're out of the money on these spreads. All we need to do is get through Friday and we're going to have three really nice winners. That's the mentality that's going on. If I close these trades down and the market rallies, well, then I'm going to look like a real dope because I hit the panic button. But again, I've been looking for a market sell-off. I believe that the table was set. I'm not going to ignore that. I will also show you another indicator that I use. I use it on a five-minute basis to day trade the S&P 500, but it also works very well on a longer-term daily basis. It's my 1OP indicator, and you can see that we had a bearish cross right here about two weeks ago. So the warning signs were already set. You can see how it's been heading lower, and now the market is following suit. We're right at the 50-day moving average. So I was fairly certain that, number one, I had to hedge our positions going into Thursday, and I needed to find something that was going to hedge my market risk. Wasn't too worried about the stocks because I picked good stocks. Walmart did look a little bit suspicious to me, but I needed something that was going to move when the market sold off. Well, the vehicle for me, I had two choices. I could have bought SPY puts, and I needed to hedge market risk. That's why I would buy SPY puts. I felt that Lyft and I felt that Net were strong. Walmart, eh. So it wasn't that the stocks were horrible. It's that the market was creating selling pressure in the underlying stock. I couldn't go out and buy puts on other stocks that were weak because what if they weren't weak on Friday? I'd be left holding the bag and my hedge would not have worked properly when it was really the market that was going to create a headache for me. So we bought puts and that was also one of the trades that I I could actually do it through my option pricing screen, which would be the best way for me to do it because we can see where they closed. And there's the March 19th expiration. And we bought the VXX $18 calls. And we did that for $3.85. And now I'll show you why the VXX was our preferred method. I'm going to go into option pricing, go into that March 19th expiration. And you can see the $18 calls here. They closed $5, bid offered at $5.20. We bought these for $3.85 on Thursday. Now here's the beauty of using VXX. Option applied volatilities, they spike when the market drops very, very sharply. But they don't continue to go up in value unless you have follow through. My analysis told me that there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. We're seeing short squeezes left and right on some of these stocks. We've got very, very heavy volume in the marketplace. My suspicion was this volatility is going to continue. And if we get another day or two of selling, we're going to have a spike in VXX. And if we get a pause, a slight reprieve in the market Thursday and Friday, I did not feel 
that those option implied volatilities would collapse overnight because that uncertainty is out there. So on Thursday, we have the VXX call position on and the market rallies. Well, what happened to those? You can see the market rallied Thursday. What happened to those calls that we bought? They retained their value the whole day. So we got in at $3.85 right on the open Thursday morning. They pretty much traded. They traded maybe 20 cents below it. They traded maybe 30 cents above it. But they held their value extremely well. And this was the tell when the market rallied all the way up to SPY 380. And they held their value. I was like, oh, this is the perfect hedge horse. Number one, all of our stocks are getting a little bit of a reprieve because the market is rallying. Now these stocks are further out of the money in most cases. Lyft rallied, NET rallied, Walmart, I showed you, eh, not so much, but it was still out of the money. So now we just got another day of time premium decay working in our favor and our VXX hedge did not lose money. Now, had I bought SPY puts Thursday and the market finished higher, I would have lost money on that hedge for sure. I didn't want that because I didn't know if the market was going to continue to head higher, if it would flatline, or if it would drop. If I didn't get the drop, I would have lost a lot of money on the SPY put hedge. So VXX worked perfectly for us. And the way that I calculated how many I wanted to do, very simple. I just took my total dollar risk exposure that I had on these three bullish put spreads, I was not concerned about the two that expire next week. We still have NVIDIA and we have Netflix on for next week. So I'm not too worried about those two positions, but they will be on my mind come Monday morning. And we'll take a quick look at those at the very end. But in any event, I didn't know what the market was going to do. If the market had rallied, we are in a bullish market for the last 11 months. We're near all-time market highs. If the market just bounced right back, we've seen short covering, so we know there's money sloshing around out there. Didn't want that risk exposure, so VXX was going to give me a really good risk reward. If the market did rally up, I felt that there was enough uncertainty and enough volatility and that option premiums were starting to increase in value that I wouldn't lose a lot of money on my hedge and I would make money on those three bullish put spreads when they expire worthless on Friday. So this was not a long-term hedge that I was looking to put on. If the market absolutely got buried on Friday, I knew that VXX would go up in value and help us hedge our positions. That wasn't enough comfort for me when I came in Friday morning. I knew that my best alternative was to shut Walmart down, to shut Lyft down immediately, and to take profits on that NET trade and still leave that VXX position on because now I still have two positions, NVIDIA and Netflix, that I still would like to hedge heading into next week. So I took the dollar amount risk that I had for Lyft, NET, and Walmart, and I divided that by $4.50 because that was our limit order that we were trying to buy the VXX calls for on Thursday morning. And I wanted options that were in the money. The March 19th were far enough out so that they would not have a lot of time premium decay and because they were in the money, they would have a decent delta, meaning that they didn't move point for point with VXX, but they had excellent movement. And if the VXX spiked up to 25 or 26, then we'd really be talking about a pretty big increase in that option value. So I also don't have a cap because I'm just long calls. I'm not long a call spread. I'm just long calls if the market really tanked. Well, my bullish put spreads can only lose so much money, but the call value of those VXX calls could go up. Unlimited upside to that. So if things really deteriorated quickly, I also had that working in my favor. So Friday morning, we closed our positions down. As it turns out, yes, if I would have just bought SPY puts, 
that actually would have worked out as a better hedge because those would have gone up dramatically in value from the opening price on Thursday to the closing price on Friday. But again, the reason for picking VXX, I felt that option implied volatilities would remain high even if the market rallied. If it sold off, I knew the VXX calls would jump in value. That was the hedge that I really needed for Thursday and Friday. Friday morning, I evaluate each one of our positions I evaluate the fact that the S&P 500 had been down 60 points overnight. It was only 10 down 10 points at the open Friday. That's all I needed to see. We've got the breakdown here after a buying climax. We had big time selling on Wednesday. Thursday, the market tries to rally. We get a bearish hammer and the SPY can't close above the halfway point of that long red candle warning sign again overnight big selling in the s p 500 futures everything rallies back to the opening that was our opportunity to reel back in our bullish put spreads so we had reduced risk locked in gains and now we could breathe easy here's the good news is when you go through trials and tribulations like this, how you respond to these instances, and you're going to probably have maybe three or four of these critical junctures throughout the course of each trading year, how you respond to these critical points is really going to determine how profitable you are for the year. Personally, I have to err on the side of caution when I'm putting swing trades out. I'm also very handcuffed. I couldn't risk that these stocks are teetering right on the short strike price with one day left and with market weakness looming, I couldn't risk that these would be 100% losers, which incidentally, if I take a look at Walmart and we had left that spread on, that would have been a max loss for us because Walmart closed at 140.49 and that means that our 143 and 42 puts finished all the way in. 100% loser on that trade? Nope, not going to do that. But we did take a 12% loss on it. That's not bad. We can live to fight another day on that. Lyft, how did that one turn out? Lyft finished at 44.46. So that was in the money by 55 cents. So that would have been a loser of more than uh, almost 30%, 25 to 30% loser for us on Lyft. And we didn't have to sweat out this trade throughout the course of the day because you can see at one point lift was all the way in and at the low was at 43.66 so in that instance the $45 and the $44 puts were all in the money looking like it could have been a 100% loser for us as well net never really had to worry too much about that one so it was wise for us to take our losses Live to fight another day. You know that market conditions are weak. Go to the sidelines with it. So now let's take a look at our remaining two positions and let me take a look at the S&P 500 and I'll outline what I think could happen. So we'll take a look at NVIDIA. That's one of our short positions. And I'm currently leaning on this support level, which is at 100-day moving average coming into play. You can see the stock has closed below the 100-day moving average. I don't like that. Earnings on 2.11, so they're coming up. We've got one more week to get through this trade. Now, we are short off of this horizontal support. Here's another instance where the stock is trapped in a range. It's compressing, compressing, hasn't done anything one way or the other. A lot of touch points down here. I didn't short the spread using the 100 day moving average when the stock was up here I wanted to give myself more breathing room on it so we went down to the 497.50 puts and we're short the 497.50 puts we're long the 495 puts we are still out of the money by about $22 that's good with a week left to go I still feel pretty good about Nvidia look what Nvidia did on Friday it sold off a little bit on the open, then it rallied in a weak market. Put the SPY overlay up, you'll see what I mean. There's the market, market rally, stock absolutely shoots higher. Now the market is tanking, but this stock held its low of the day 
the entire day. This is relative strength. I think NVIDIA wants to go higher. AMD reported a really good number this week. That stock has been a little soft, but I think AMD will probably go higher as well. Super, super good number. I think revenues were up somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 plus percent. So really strong fundamentals for this group, graphics chip makers. So we're still in this trade. We've got our VXX hedge on. And depending on what the market's doing overnight, I will be putting out a video Sunday night. So please make sure to watch that. And our other trade, it is a problem child as well. And it has been from the get-go. We had this nice breakout on Netflix after earnings. This was the bar that we got. I really liked that. I suspected that the stock might pull back a little bit and challenge the gap, but I did not expect it to pull back like this. So we were leaning on this breakout right in here. And we are short the 550 puts and we're long the... 545 puts let me confirm that position very quickly on Netflix we are short the 550s long the 547 50s these options are super expensive so we don't have the latitude to even leg out of this spread because you're talking about uh, at the money options that are trading at 15 16 dollars a contract so we're not able to leg out of Netflix that's another reason that we have to have a market hedge on for this the stock was weak and I did not like the price action all in here so I was pretty worried about this one going into the week but the stock did get a little bit of a reprieve in here it had still preserved the gap Wednesday was the tell that was a big day of selling but you can see how the stock has finished at the midway point of this long red candle and Friday it did not drop with the market this is another choppy one and I've preferred not to go chasing stocks that have gone parabolic on big breakouts because those are the ones that are going to pull back the fastest and the hardest when I sold these out of the money bullish put spreads I was really looking for stocks that weren't making giant moves but that had that bullish tendency into the earnings announcement that was my play and then I was going to be leaning on key support levels well that was a key support level that was breached there's not much we can do about this particular trade because we're all the way in the money but there are some signs of encouragement because netflix is starting to find some relative strength and i could put up my 10 si indicator in option stalker and then you'll be able to see what i mean i'll take the 10p indicator off you can see how friday it spent most of its time above the zero line when the orange line is above zero, that means relative strength. When it's below zero, it means relative weakness. And you can see how on Thursday, also, a good part of the day spent above the zero line. I think that Netflix is starting to gain a bid, meaning that buyers are starting to line up. They also posted an excellent number. They said they're going to have free cash flow uh, starting this next quarter. They're... Uh, looking to finance all of their own uh, movies and shows so they're not going to have to issue any more debt and they could actually start some buyback programs. There are a lot of positive uh, news components to their earnings release. That's why the stock gapped up so much. Was going to check this breakout. They couldn't hold it because of the market pressure and the momentum had already been established. But this is one that I would watch. I think Netflix and NVIDIA both look good. And Thursday, for a brief moment, the stock was actually out of the money. So I was feeling pretty good about that. I think these could set up next week. Got to be careful of the market. So that'll be the way that I conclude my analysis. Market first. Market first, market first. That's how I started my video. That's how I'm going to conclude the video. So I see some danger signs here. I believe that uh, we could see some follow through selling next week. How far could we possibly drop? Well, I will show you the channel one more time here. And I will tell you that if I take this distance in here, and I figure that it could make as big a move on the downside. It takes us down to the 100-day moving average. Also, when you have an upward sloping channel like this right here, 
and you poke through the upper end of the channel, these moves tend to go back down to where that channel started. And so if I drop my crosshair tool right here, you can see that takes us to about 350. Before we get to 350, the 100-day moving average is in play. So that could be, that's a horizontal resistance level. That's a horizontal resistance level. I believe that somewhere around this 355 level, we're going to find support. We could go down to 350 before the market actually gains a bid. After a drop like this, I would not expect a V bottom. So I wouldn't expect drop, touch, zoom, off to the races. Now, a more typical pattern after a drop like this is that you get some sustained selling, market bounces, and then it retests that support, and then the next wave higher is the really good one. What does that mean for the market? For me personally, it's time. Time, 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 because stocks need time to grow into their current valuations. The only way to do that is to generate profits for a month or a quarter or two, get behind this coronavirus, start getting the economy back on track. That'll give politicians time to get that $1.9 trillion stimulus bill passed. Time is the critical component. And a drop like that could take, look, that basically unfolded from August to about the end of October, that's about a quarter. Yes, we could flounder around and then eventually start to regain our footing and get a nice rally off of that low. That's how I see the market playing out. Now that means we had, on this pullback in here, we were already starting to sell bullish put spreads in here, figuring that the 100 day would hold. We were in at really good prices. We had plenty of cushion. That was great. We got a little bit of a lift off. Everything's good in here. By picking the right stocks, we're still selling out of the money bullish put spreads. Option implied volatilities are relatively high on pullbacks like this. So we're able to generate really nice income. And then ultimately you get a breakdown like this above a downward sloping trend line. And then you kind of know, all right, now we should see some easy, smooth sailing. I had mentioned to you before that the key as swing traders is that we're highly leveraged and we're trying to generate some really spectacular returns. We need to make sure that there are times when the market is telling us that we need to be sidelined because these big market drops like this, if you're aggressively selling out of the bullet, out of the money bullish put spreads, then you are oblivious to what's going on in the market. Moves like this will wipe you out. So you need to avoid them. You need to err on the side of caution. And that means my lesson here would have been to say, listen, Pete, you see the warning signs. Don't be selling bullish put spreads here. No matter what your intentions are, no matter how good you think the trade is, don't do it because you're going to run the risk. Now, we were still able to get through the month of January. I had my model account. I think it finished up 5% for the month. Uh, a lot of you could be going, oh, God, 5%? You did all that work for 5%? We dodged a major bullet. We were on track to make 15% in January. We just needed to get through two more little days. Didn't happen for us. But I assure you, now that we have seen this market correction, now that the market will come in, we are going to have some fertile hunting grounds over the course of the next quarter that we're going to be hitting. We've got to wait for this market support to come in. Now, here's the other beauty about waiting. You dodge a bullet like this, you're in cash, now you are stocking. And that's what we do. I didn't name my platform Option Run Around With Your Head Cut Off. I named it Option Stalker for a reason because we're patiently waiting for these opportunities to set up and we're going to have lots of those opportunities coming to us. So when the market starts to come in like this, here's the huge edge that we have. Market drops, drops, drops. All the while we are looking for which stocks are treading water or even moving a little bit higher. We know that 
the bid is super strong because institutions have revealed themselves. If the market were selling off and the stock were selling off, then we would know that buyers don't have that big an appetite for that stock. So when you get these market pullbacks like this and you see those stocks treading water, just wanting to tick higher on any little market bounce, you know those are your great candidates for selling out of the money bullish put spreads. Or if we turn bullish on the market and option premiums are fairly low, we can actually buy calls for one of the first times in a very long time. So we'll also be looking at that strategy as well. So let the market come in. We're almost in cash right now. We've got our VXX hedge on. I'm going to do a video Sunday night. I'll let you know what my plans are for that hedge. Should you get cute if you're a swing trader and try and short this market? If you are a swing trader with a one or two day perspective and you really are able to keep an eye on the market intraday, sure, I think there are going to be some good shorting opportunities here. Day trading, absolutely I'm going to be looking at some shorts next week because I think that we're going to see follow through selling. But the problem with swing traders who have a one to two to three week time horizon is that these snapback rallies when you're in an 11 year bull market, when you're in a 10 month bull market, they are violent and I mean they come so quickly this might be a little bit of an example where everything looks horrible and then gap 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 uh oh so if you are long puts thinking that the next shoe is going to drop and the market's going to head lower that is what you have to deal with you can see how quickly the market recovered from SPY 324 to SPY 370 in the course of five days. Violent snapback rallies. That's why I don't suggest that if you are a longer term swing trader that you try and get cute and short this market. Because if you get one of these whammies in here, you're going to spend all of your time trying to repair your damage on your bearish trades instead of looking for opportunity. This pullback that we have in the market, it's a dip. It's a dip within a long-term uptrend. This is not something that you have to short or should short. This is an opportunity. This is your chance to wait by the watering hole and to see who comes by. You're hunting, hunting, stalking these stocks and waiting for that market support to reveal itself. And once we start to see it, that's when we're going to take action and that's when we're going to start reloading our bullish put spreads. Until then, we're going to be very passive. We're going to get to cash on our last two positions. We're hedged. We're in great shape. I hope that you've enjoyed this content. Again, I don't think that enough time is spent describing exactly how to hedge positions, why they were hedged, which spread should I close down, which spread should I not close down. Ah, oh, I closed that spread down and it ended up being a winner. I tried to paint the picture for you. The main thing was that market conditions were changing. I could see the weakness. This is something I'd seen for a while. Now we've got tells on Monday. We've got tells on Wednesday. Thursday's price action, not that good. And when it came to Walmart, I could look at that individual stock and go, that baby is headed lower. That has relative weakness. That for sure is a spread that I need to close down. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the content, Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure to turn on your notifications so that you never miss any of these videos. I didn't have any new trades for you in this video, but I feel that the lesson that I imparted to you was much more valuable than showing you a little short-term winning trade that might last a few days. This lesson should last you throughout your trading career. You should be able to look back on this and understand all the different factors that are in play and how to structure your hedges and adjust your positions. Thanks so much. Good luck with your trading. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.